this is 2.47 a.m. on Sunday, the 20th of December, 2020. I've been uh, having these thoughts uh, for, for so many times and I've never given it much attention. And then that thought flashed you know on me right you know just while i was sleeping and then i woke up and i feel i needed i needed to address it uh once and for all and is i'll make it biblical i'll pick some biblical icons you know uh, uh people in the bible who who one way or the other could have, you know, had, who one way or the other were impacted or were affected by those um, uh, situations. So first of all, I'm going to begin with, have you ever wondered in your role as a leader, certain decisions you've made how it impacts other people have you ever wondered in your role as a leader how you were given a privilege to act in the place of God over other people to supervise other people so what it means is when God entrusts you with a responsibility, he expects you to make decisions that are human. In as much as you're making those decisions that are human, you also do not compromise your position as a leader. So many leaders today have compromised their position. And you know what? Each time you compromise your position as a leader, you get into trouble. You will certainly get into trouble. If you're a leader who is fear who is fearful of the people you are leading, then you're going to be in trouble. If you're a leader who has been threatened not to say the truth, you're going to be in trouble. If you're a leader who um, who wants to cover up Injustice, deceit, betrayal, uh, uh, any unjust practice, you know, um, just want to cover up abuses, you want to cover up, um, just name it. It can be a political leader, a religious leader, it doesn't matter what kind of leader you are. Once you're a leader and you fell you lack the moral capacity the moral strength to to confront issues and address issues the way they ought to be you are definitely going to be in trouble and guess what god is going to hold you accountable god will hold you accountable for those decisions why am i saying this I'm saying it because so many people in the Bible, you know, uh, were caught up in this, in this kind of situation. Let's take, for instance, in Genesis, um, when God created Adam and Eve and they sinned. First of all, Eve sinned. God didn't bother. Until Adam, until Adam sinned. So, uh, in my own analysis, it it, it 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 could be possible that God could have forgiven Adam if he didn't, you know, eat the forbidden fruit. It is possible that we wouldn't be in the situation of suffering for original sin if Adam were to obey God, but. Because Adam failed to correct Eve, because Adam failed to stand 
and use his free will very well. Because Adam failed as a leader, because Adam failed in his responsibility to take the right action and the right decision, that was why God imposed the punishment on him. Adam is a typical example. He suffered for it. We all know the punishment that God gave to him as a leader. With all his excuses, it is the woman you gave me. He was asked one question and he started answering another question. That's what most leaders do today. By the time you are taking those decisions, those bad decisions, crooked decisions, evil decisions, hidden decisions, cover-ups, and you think when God comes that you will say, oh, uh, this person made me to do it. God is not going to listen to you because he entrusted you with the responsibility to make decisions and you didn't do that. That is one. Another one is Moses. We remember all the complaints, the, Israel, the Israelites when they were complaining, grumbling. Grumbling. Aaron, Miriam, all the Israelites when they were all giving, giving Moses tension. Moses got angry. Instead of striking once, he struck two. He made decisions that he was not supposed to make as a leader. And he paid for it. He was not allowed. He couldn't get into the land of Canaan. He couldn't get into the promised land. Because he failed as a leader. Let me also come maybe closer. You remember Pontius Pilate, that Roman guy? Okay, I'm sure you remembered him. Why is the Catholic Church always mentioning him today? He never raised a nail. He never raised a hammer on Jesus. He never slapped Jesus. He failed as a leader. That's why the church is mentioning him every single Sunday. Every single solemnity, any time that we sing the creed, we mention Pontius Pilate, suffered under Pontius Pilate. Wow. Forever and ever, Pontius Pilate has been bookmarked as the one who failed to make a decision as a leader. He had every reason to say, okay, I understand you are innocent and I'm not going to do anything to you. I will release this man to go. But he failed to make that decision. So as a leader, you can be bookmarked for good reasons and for bad reasons. For good reasons, good. But for every single bad decision you make, God is going to judge you perpetually. For it, and you are going to suffer for it. Any decision you fail to make to do the right thing for people, to do the will of God, God is going to ask you questions. You will fail as a leader when you refuse to make, when you refuse to listen to the voice of God and then make the decisions that will please God and please man, and not just making decisions to please man because you are under pressure. You will go in for it. So the church remembers Pontius Pilate because he failed. In our contemporary world today, we have a lot of leaders making decisions, even in the church. You want to please one group or the other, or one priest or the other, or one parishioner or the other. You are going to be in trouble for making those decisions. That's how it goes. Because God is not going to let you make those decisions. 
God is not going to allow you to get scot free. You make wrong decisions, you go in for it. As a politician, instead of taking care of those who have elected you, you decided to pay attention to your cronies. You will go in for it. You will suffer for it. You will pay dearly for it. So for every bad decision you make, for every bad choices you make, for your invincible and invincible ignorance, some of you will claim ignorance. Yes, you don't you don't know, you just feign ignorance. You will still go in for it. You will answer for it. There is nothing hidden in this life. Everything has a price. God has made this world that in such a way that we are not escaping this place. We are all stuck in this area called earth. And then you make any decision that will impact wrongly on the lives of other people. You will suffer for it. In fact, your, your punishment will begin from this earth. Your conscience will continue to kill you. There is no rest for the wicked. So, are you about making a decision? Are you about ignoring the cries, the pains of people entrusted to you? You still have an opportunity to make things right. Follow God's will. Follow what God has taught you. Don't listen to people. Don't try to please anyone. God makes, uh, God makes the king. God has given you that opportunity to be in charge of others. Follow God. Follow his will so he can bless you. Don't listen to people's selfishness and greed. Don't pay attention to those who want you to cover up. For how long can you cover up lies? For how long can you lie and cover up? For how long can you go into greed because of your selfishness? For how long? Also for those who support bad leaders, for those who know the right thing and keep quiet, there's also punishment for you. If you think God is blind, when you know the truth, you have to say it. When you allow the just people, a just man or woman to suffer, unjustly you are also culpable i just want you to know it doesn't matter how much you pray how much you fast it doesn't matter even if you're a politician it doesn't matter even if you are in the church in the clerical status it doesn't matter there's a punishment for you and no amount of prayers and masses can clear it up repent and do the right thing when you, when you keep quiet and know the truth and people are suffering, for every moment that the person continues to spend in pains because of you, there's a punishment for it. I just want you to know. So many of us sometimes, we know the truth and we keep quiet. It's just a matter of time. When you use the authorities in the wrong way, just to flex your muscles and powers, God is watching. There's a punishment for you. And it's coming. It can come in so many ways. It can come in so many ways. Either directly or indirectly. God is going to pick you up. Just watch out. You will sit somewhere and cry and groan and moan for God to listen to you and he will be very far away from you for what you've put people, for the pains you've put people through. Have you made that decision already? Retrace your steps. Go back. Confess your sins. Apologize to the people you have offended unjustly. Reach out to them. Right your wrongs. Leave your ego. Go and make up with people you have hurt. 
you will never succeed. If you're a leader, do the right thing. If you are supporting a leader, stay away. Tell him that he is wrong. Tell that leader to stop. Don't support evil. There's no rest for the wicked. Don't borrow the punishment that belongs to another person. Don't incur the wrath of another. God will punish you for supporting evil, for protecting evil, for concealing evil. It doesn't matter who you are, your status. God is not a respecter of man or persons. I just want you to know. This is what I felt this morning, and I feel I should talk about it. I woke up in my sleep, and I felt I should talk about it. This is the hour of mercy, 3 a.m., and I'm going to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Almighty ever-living Jesus, I thank you for this great hour of mercy. Father, I want to pray in this moment for anyone who is listening under the sound of my voice or who is watching this and who has made one mistake or the other as a leader or as someone who is close to a leader. Father, bring your Holy Spirit upon them. Grant them the courage to do the right thing. If they are done wrong, help them with the courage and the zeal to retrace their steps. If there are people who are suffering under them, Father, help them to nurture those who have sent upon them. You said you are the good shepherd. Help them to emulate your good examples in being a leader. Help them to uplift people from their burdens, from their troubles, from their sufferings, instead of causing more harm. Are they making people go through certain injustice, certain cover-ups, certain decisions that they know that it's all lies? Father, I pray that you send your Holy Spirit in their hearts. Give them the heart of flesh as Ezekiel, pray, as Ezekiel prophesied and not the heart of stone so that they can repent from their sins and turn into a good way. Father, you said that those who believe in you are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Father, help them to receive you. Help them to find you. Jesus, you said, the spirit, the, the, you said that those who belong to you, the sheep that belong to you, listen to your voice. They know you and you know them. Father, I pray that you welcome these leaders who are making these mistakes, who are progressing in error for one reason or the other, because they don't want to be, they don't want to be, uh, they, they don't, they feel for some reason they want to listen to other people. They couldn't resist the pressure from other people. Father, help them. Let them know that you are the one who has called them to be leaders, either religious, either clerical, either political. Father, in any way, all leaders of the world, even in our Catholic Church, even in all in the in politics, in the political world, in the social world, in the uh, professional world, Father, wherever people are going through oppression and repression, because of those who are supposed to make decisions, Father, I pray at this hour of mercy that you begin to go round as you went through the Passover to touch 
the people of Israel go around right now in their sleep, in their dreams, and begin to minister to them, to wake up and become a new person, so that by the, the coming of Jesus Christ in the next five days, we bring new tidings to them, we bring change of heart to them, we unlock every heart that has been locked. Father, in the name of Jesus, for you to reveal this to me, Father, I pray that you reveal it also to them. You woke Joseph up from dream because you have a message for him. Father, you have woken me up to reveal this this message to me, and I'm delivering it to whoever that will encounter this message. Father, may they not remain the same in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord Jesus, I trust you. I believe in you. I thank you for speaking into my heart, and I thank you for calling me in my heart, for putting this desire to love you, to serve you. Father, help me to love you in everything May your word continue to be my food. May your may the desire to serve you never die inside of me. May I find joy in being in your presence every day of my life. Father, I decree and declare that no weapon, if you have called me to serve you, no weapon fashioned against my vocation shall prosper. No weapon fashioned against my desire to serve you shall prosper. And I cover it in the blood of Jesus. I cover it in the blood of Jesus. I cover it in the blood of Jesus. All this I pray, believing in the name of your only Son, Jesus Christ, put now and forever. Amen. I have one prayer uh, uh, composed by Kate, uh, Kathleen Linguist. The name of the prayer is Mary the Dawn. It says, Mary the Dawn, Christ the perfect day. Mary the Gate, Christ the heavenly way. Mary the Root, Christ the mystic vine. Mary the Grape, Christ the sacred wine. Mary the Wheat Chef, Christ the living bread. Mary the Rose Tree, Christ the rose blood red. Mary the Font, Christ the cleansing flood. Mary the Chalice, Christ the saving blood. Mary the Temple, Christ the Temple's Lord. Mary the Shrine, Christ the God adored. Mary the Beacon, Christ the Heaven's Rest. Mary the Mirror, Christ the Vision Blessed. Mary the Mother, Christ the Mother's Son. Both ever blessed, why endless ages run. Amen. He says, Mary the Dawn, Christ the perfect day. Mary the Gate, Christ the heavenly way. Mary the Root, Christ the mystic vine. Mary the Grave, Christ the sacred wine. Mary with chef, Christ the living bread. Mary rose tree, Christ the rose blood red. Mary the font, Christ the cleansing flood. Mary the chalice, Christ the saving blood. Mary the temple, Christ the temple's Lord. Mary the shrine, Christ the God adored. Mary the beacon, Christ the heavens rest. Mary the mirror, Christ the vision blessed. Mary the mother, Christ the mother's son, both ever blessed. While and is strong. So that's just a song. And it ends with Amen. You find it's a, it's a, it's a song by Kathleen Longuist. Titled Mary the Dawn. May God bless you as you witness 
the last day today. Peace be with you. Keep me in your prayers.